here we are. We're live. Let me turn on a little light here so you can see me a little bit better. Oh, yay. Okay. So my name is Gail. Let me see here. Uh, today is our 45-minute yoga, potential yoga for low back hair class. Um, type of a practice it is, it's a Hatha yoga practice. So part of what the Veterans Yoga Protocol, uh, when we teach classes for VYP, we're supposed to um, give you an uh, experience that is intended to help undo all the stress and that we deal with on a chronic basis. So some of the five tools that we use are uh, breathing, mindful movement, meditation, rest, and gratitude. So those are like the, the tenets of uh, veteran yoga protocol. So be that as that may, we're gonna, we're gonna put that all in a 45 minute class today. Maybe a little bit longer, maybe not. You know, I'm here a little bit early today. And my, I have a reminder for y'all to keep everything between easy and ouch. If you have, are you kind of leery about doing this class because you can't easily get down on the floor, grab a chair, bring it close to where you're going to practice. Now I'll also show you how to get up and down off the floor when we do our yoga. So for yoga for low back care, probably I would say two thirds of the class is on the ground. So you may want to have a couch close by where you can kind of uh, crawl over there to get yourself up or again a chair. I, I have one of these little wire chairs that I use. Uh, let me think what else we have about a minute to do. So I'm going to be doing the, the breath, the warm up, the core work, standing strength and balance, the cool down and the yogic sleep method which is uh, known as eye rest or yoga nidra. Um, lots of benefits for doing this practice to help ease pain. Let me see. Um, let, me, let, me get, let me get the benefits of yoga that you'll get typically that you get out of a class. Uh, Dr. Timothy McCall has listed 117 conditions helped by doing yoga on a regular basis. So part of that is uh, lowering your blood pressure, better joint mobility, building your bones, improving circulation, easing back pain, which is why we're here today, right? Uh, gaining flexibility, lessening stress, uh, helping you to sleep better. So there's a little survey here at the end of my little comment section. It's a stress and pain survey, so if you can kind of like take note of, you know, where's my pain level? You may not be having pain today, and that's okay too. Just so, you know, if you would, fill out that little survey. Let me know if you're uh, one of my friends, family, veterans, active military, first responder, uh, health care worker, or, you know, whatever, just pop in. Oh, hi, Lenore. Nice to see you. Um, I won't be able to see the names when y'all come in, but thanks for popping in and, and saying something. All right, so it's the top of the hour, so we're going to get started. Again, for this practice, you'll need a block or rolled up towels, uh, maybe a long towel to do uh, in lieu of a strap. And But if you have a strap and a block, you know, that's handy too. When you replay this, have those tools uh, available for you so it's easier for your uh, practice gentle yoga for low back here all right so I'm gonna move my chair and I also you'd like to have a blanket because at the very end I like to put the blanket back behind my knees so I can kind of let my backside rest when we do that final relaxation so if you can get, grab a blanket or maybe a pillow to put underneath the knees that would be helpful too all right so let me go put that over here and I'm going to take my uh, chair to the top of the yoga mat, but we're going to practice yoga today. Let's start standing today. I know that's kind of unusual. We don't normally stand, but when we start, but we're going to have our feet be parallel, the outsides of the feet. And let's go ahead and place our hands to heart center. And I invite you to close your eyes. Now, why? I want you to test your balance to see if you're like leaning over one side versus the other or more forward and back. Now, closing your eyes is not cool for you. Just gaze softly down at the floor. Breathing in, breathing out. Again, inhaling the belly is big. Exhaling, draw that belly towards the spine. Again, inhaling, belly big. Exhale, belly towards the spine. Beautiful. All right, let's come to our chair. And you're going to bend your knees, contract your belly button towards the spine, and hands on the chair or forearms on the chair, and then you're going to sit one leg back. Now, if you've got a knee that you're kind of, you know, babying a little bit, you can basically take your hand down to the floor, lean down, and come down softly, or step that other foot back, right? All right, so I'm going to move my chair out of the way. Let me check one more thing with the computer. 
Y'all go ahead and lay on your backs with your knees bent. I'm trying to see here what's going on with everything. Very good. All right. We'll first do constructive rest pose. So that's the one that we kind of, if you could do this for about 10, 15 minutes outside of class, just to kind of let your back settle into the ground, that's good stuff, right? All right, so arms out to the side, legs parallel to the outside of the legs. We're trying not to have the knees drop in or the legs drop out. Just be here nice and parallel. Now we're gonna place our hands on our belly and we're gonna do that, that belly breath, that diaphragmatic breathing, which is that three part breath. So when you breathe up here in the chest, that's your fight or flight syndrome. So a lot of us breathe just up in here. But when we make the belly expand as we inhale, then draw the belly button towards the spine as we exhale, that is our uh, lessening the cortisol, lessening the stress breath. So that's good stuff. So that's part of your lessening your stress is the belly breathing coordinated with your yoga movements. That's good stuff. All right, here we go. So if you're joining us, it's gentle yoga for low back care. We're on our backs doing constructive rest pose. Basically feet on the yoga mat, knees bent behind and backside on the yoga mat. So here we go, breathe in, belly gets big. Exhale, draw that belly button towards your spine. So I'm breathing through the mouth so you can hear the breath. This is part of your core work also, when you draw that belly button towards the spine. Little contraction there. Again, inhale, belly big. Exhale, belly towards the spine. This is one of the five mindful practices that we do in our Veterans Yoga Protocol methodology. And again, inhale, belly out. It's the breathing, it's the mindful movement, it's the meditation, the gratitude and rest. That's to help us lessen our chronic stress that we seem to have even more so in these times, right? I keep talking, you keep breathing. Here we go, one more time. Breathe in, hi there, belly big. Exhale, belly towards the spine. Beautiful. All right, we're going to do knee to chest pose next. So contract the belly button towards the spine, lift the leg up, and then exhale, bring that knee into chest, the leg that's closest to me, and then inhale, leg away. Woo, we got to warm everything up. Contract. Exhaling knee to chest before we work things out. And you may notice some little snap, crackle, pops going on here, call it the Rice Krispies of the hips, of the knees. <laughs> okay, if you've never eaten Rice Krispies, and that doesn't mean a thing to you, right? Hopefully everybody's eating Rice Krispies. <laughs> you know, when you put the milk in on your cereal, it makes that <laughs> kind of noise. Okay, I digress, right? Oh, I think one of my little lights went out. Oh well, we'll get that working later on when I come up close at the end. Woo! And again, exhale, knee in the chest. I was going a little fast there. Inhale, leg out. Exhale, knee in the chest. Go as much as you can in your own range of motion. Inhale, leg out. And one more time, exhale, knee in the chest. And then release this leg down to the floor. Now, if you want to use the strap to help facilitate this pose, you would take the middle of the strap or your towel along the bottom of the foot. And then just kind of hang out here, shoulders down on the ground. Exhale, knee in the chest. Inhale, leg out. Exhale, knee in the chest. Inhale, leg out. Exhale, knee in the chest. Inhale, leg out. Keep breathing, keep moving. Love it. I hope y'all are enjoying these uh, classes that we are giving y'all during this time. It's really nice that the Veterans Yoga Project is able to provide content for veterans and you know everybody, anybody who really needs these classes, yeah? It's like a little yoga snack. <laughs> I love it. And I know we all have, you know, things that we need to do and all that. So I like it how it's in the 15 and 30 minute and 45 minute segments. It's really good stuff. One more and release. I'm going to take that strap out to the side. Again, if you have a hand towel, you know, that's, you can just kind of use the hand towel for our yoga poses too, right? All right. So um, we're going to take our block or that towel or the rolled up blanket, place it in between the legs. So we're doing a little bit different sequence than what we did uh, last Friday, and that's good too, okay? So I'm gonna kinda walk my ankles towards one another and contract that belly button towards the spine, my arms out into a low V, 
and I'm going to bring, drop the, the legs towards you. Now you may feel a nice long stretch happening here, top side of the hip, top hip. Contract that belly button towards the spine, bring it back to heart center, breathe in, and then exhale, drop it the other way. And you're kind of on the side of the foot here when you're doing this. Woo, I feel a big old long stretch on this side. Now, I didn't feel it on the other side. Again, yoga is about noticing, woo, what's going on this side versus the other. Okay, now exhale, draw the belly button towards the spine, bring the legs back to heart center. And let's do that one more time each side. So squeeze that block. You're using the inner thigh muscles, which is part of your uh, core, by the way. And exhale, drop. And again, notice what that top side feels like, if there's anything going on there. Inhale back to center, or exhale back to center. If you inhale, that's okay too, okay? Inhale, stay here. Drop it towards away from me. Towards away from me? That does not make sense, does it? <laughs> ah. And again, exhale back to heart center. Beautiful. All right, just for grins here, we got the block, we got the towel. Let's bring it up in front of us and kind of wiggle those shoulders a little bit and look behind me see if there's going to be anything uh, back there and you know what uh, bring the ankles together knees together and squeeze the legs towards one another now drop that block back behind you and notice you know are you able to touch the floor with the block are you squeezing the belly button towards the spine inhale belly soft exhale draw that belly button towards the spine bring the block back on up now this time, take the block in between the knees and feet about knee width apart. There we go. And then uh, either clasp or interlace the hands and push those. Uh, well, actually, I have the palms towards you this time, okay? And then we're going to inhale, be here, belly soft. Exhale, draw that belly button towards the spine and drop those arms back behind you. And again, you may be having some hesitation one side versus the other. Your arms may be hugging the ears. Exhale, bring it back on up. Keep squeezing the block no matter what, though. Inhale, stay here. Exhale, arms overhead. So we're doing stuff not only for the low back, but for the upper back. Yay. Inhale, back on up. Exhale, back on up. And release. Bring those arms into letter T. Take those fingers and really curve them into the palm of the hand. And that activates the forearms and press the shoulders into the floor. And also squeeze the block at the same time, a little extra squeeze. So again, working the upper back musculature, also working the core here and the inner thighs. So squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Let's do five more. Five, four, three, two, and one. And relax just a moment. Breathe in. Breathe out. Again, hands interlace or clasp. And we're going to bring the arms back up overhead. Notice if you're able to come a little bit closer to the floor. I am. So working that back, kind of working, again, the musculature with the upper body, the lower body, helps you to ease your pain. All right. Exhale. Draw that belly button towards the spine. Press the low back into the yoga mat. Bring the arms back on up and release. All right. Take that block out to the side. Let's do the notice pose while we're here. So that means extending those legs and notice how your body feels at this moment. You might feel a little bit more open, less stiff. It may not be happening yet. Just know that, okay? Again, keep everything between the easy and out. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Just keep breathing. And if you feel a strong sensation in a pose, return your attention to the breath. Breathe in, breathe out. Listen to that breath as it goes in through the nose and out through the nose. Contract the belly button towards the spine. Bend one knee. Then the other, grab either your towel or your block. Now I'm going to show this top side, um, just so you can kind of see what's going on. And we're going to take the strap or the towel into the bottom of the right foot. And then press that right foot towards the sky. Now for me, um, this towel is not quite long enough uh, for this side, for my body. But, you know, you work with what you got, right? Now the reason I say that is because my shoulders are up off the ground. And we try to do this with the shoulders relaxed into the floor. So if I were to take a longer towel or my strap, let me see here, then that helps facilitate, you know, less stress going on with the upper body. So we're going to do toes. Let me take that towel out. <laughs> but you work with what you got, right? Okay, that's fine too. You can also have hands back behind the thigh if you don't have a towel or strap. So toes towards you aligned with the ankle, shin, knee. So if you tend to turn the foot out to the side, 
bring it aligned with your leg. And you might feel a little extra spice woo, going on. And again, invite your leg towards your body. And um, I'd be pressing that small of the back into the yoga mat. Now, if there's stuff going on in the back of the knee, you can always bend the knee, but keep flexing the heel, toes towards you. So we stay in this pose a little bit. So you might see that this is a different kind of strap than what you normally see in a yoga class or might have at home. It has all these little loops. It's called a stretch out strap. So when I took my initial uh, yoga training with props, we use we had this type of strap in the class. And this is over 20 years ago when I you know took that training. And so it's like, oh man, I gotta get some of those because those are really awesome. What's great about this is I can just loop my hands in the the loops and don't have to have active grip. So if you have if you're working with uh, folks that you know have some um, less grip issues, this is great for that. So just a little yoga teacher note there or a yoga student note. All right, so we're gonna take the left leg, kind of walk it out and and bring it out to the side and contract that belly button towards the spine, please. And I'm going to switch the strap into one hand, bring that left arm out, and drop that right leg. Now, this one's not going to go very far at this moment. Now, if you start to find that that opposite hip starts to kind of roll and raise off, that means you've dropped it a little bit too much. Or you can take your left hand and press on that hip. So why do we do this pose? Well, this is one for very, very tight hamstrings behind. Um, it's also a bone building pose when you stay in the pose about 30 seconds or more. Hi there, we're doing gentle yoga for low back care. Join us when you're ready. Um, it's also um, when you build your bones because you're stimulating the muscles, that's good stuff for low back care, okay? It's all interconnected, the legs interconnected to the behind, low back. It's got that chain of command going on here. Woo! All right, bring it back to heart center, bend that knee into the chest. You know what, switch it over to the other side. Contract the belly button towards the spine as you bring the knee into the chest. Strap into the foot, foot into the strap, if that makes any sense. Ooh, this is my spicy side. So for my spicy side, I have a little bend in the knee. You can't see that with the top down view. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and turn sideways since it's facing towards you. Ooh, and again, line up the foot with the shin with the knee. Very good. Again, might be some spice going on here. So going back to return your attention to your breath, when you're kind of in that little kind of area, it's like, ooh, it's almost to where I want to modify my pose, but maybe not. Okay, so breathe in through the nose. Breathe out through the nose. Again, inhaling and exhaling. So if you're using that little kind of noise, it's called the ujjayi breath. We kind of affectionately call it the Darth Vader breath. But if you do use too much force, kind of dries out your throat, so make sure you have some water close by, because it's kind of like, meh, okay? So not so forceful, but just enough to where you can hear the sound yourself. Your neighbor doesn't have to hear the sound, okay? Just know that. I know I, sometimes I'm in yoga classes, and I'll hear somebody three or four mats away from me doing the really loud breath, and I'm going, man, that's awesome. Wish I could do that, but I can't. Oh, well. All right, so that right leg steps out a little bit, drops out, and then the left leg drops towards the floor. Now I'm using both hands on this side. Maybe I should just use one. I'll just use one. I'll use my opposite hand. You can kind of play around with how that feels, okay? Again, if you need to bend that knee, you're going to feel it in little different places when you have the knee bent as opposed to leg softly straightened. Woo! Again, toes towards you, heel flex. Man, you're kind of stimulating those um, tendons, ligaments, muscles on the bottoms of the feet. If you have that plantar fasciitis, I can never say that. You know, this is kind of working that area too. So you got you got a bonus here with the strap on the bottom of the foot. If you're to use that hand towel, um, it may not be long enough. So you could use a long beach towel instead. That works too. You can also use a dog leash, a long nice scarf. Ooh, it's raining. <laughs> All right, bring it back to the center and bend that knee into the chest. Let's again do that notice pose. Again, we're kind of noticing, ooh, how's this feel now since we just did that, right? And I can already notice the right side opening up a little bit. And so the left side, it's more tight. And they don't quite feel even yet, but that's because this is my side that I have my issues with the tissues. All right, so we're going to do the piriformis bounce and pigeon pose, and then we'll do the rest of the floor exercises 
after we do our standing yoga poses because I want to get a little balance, a little strength stuff going on, and a little bit of back bends. Easy back bends though, nothing, nothing too strenuous. All right, so again, I'm going to show the top down view just so that you know, you're not looking at my side view all the time. <laughs> so you're, again, we're going to work with the right leg first. Let me see if I can get this working here. Okay. So bring your, uh, contract your belly button towards the spine, right leg up in the air, hand on top of the thigh, hand back behind the thigh. You're just kind of rotating the foot out to the side. So again, we got to warm it up before we work it out. you got to get circulation going on before you strengthen that musculature. So one of the things that you might have handy, you know what, I need to grab my block. Because sometimes we're going to do the crossover pigeon today. We didn't do crossover pigeon last time, so I'm just kind of giving you a variety of yoga poses. A little kind of a healthy back class, let's just say that. Heel to the center, toes out, drop it on top of that left thigh. Then we're going to contract the belly button. Actually, no, first we're going to do piriformis bounce. We're going to bounce the leg away. So again, here we are warming up that muscle before we work it out. So those of you that are, you know, coming in and taking the classes, I'd be curious to see if this is being effective for you and your back issues. I know it is for my students that I teach in my Zoom class on Monday night. Um, you know, they, they, it's just been amazing. They just like, man, thanks for doing this class. You know. Um, otherwise, I don't think, you know, they would have done yoga. I don't, I don't know. There's so much uh, available yoga out there, but they, you know, want to pay their little, little fee to do the Zoom yoga, and I, I just appreciate that. All right, so from here, we're going to do it a little bit different, doing crossover pigeon. So crossover pigeon is you keep the left foot on the ground, and then your arms out into a letter T, and I'm going to keep this block handy. I may need it to go underneath my... A right foot and then you're gonna drop over towards the left hand side now I'm able to I think come down yeah I'm able to come down to the ground Woo! now you may be feeling lots of stuff going on here so here's the invitation here you know what you can either press down on the top side of the leg or bring the, the right leg away or you know I got my block I'm gonna kind of cheat a little bit cheating's okay I'm gonna press down on that thigh to make that go away now again keep it away from ouch other arm out to the side. Now, you can look at the ceiling, look towards your crossover side, or look the opposite direction. Kind of depends what's going on with you and your neck. The traditional way is to look the opposite direction. You'll feel that oppositional kind of contraction lengthening happening with the neck and the shoulders. Woo! So, the right foot is on the yoga mat. That left foot's kind of turned to the side. You're probably feeling this gigantic uh, something, something going on <laughs> with that right hip. Now I'm going to turn my head back to heart center, actually turn it towards my crossover pigeon side, contract my belly button towards the spine, bring the leg back to heart center. Woo! All right, take that leg up and off. We're going to do the other side. So I'm going to still do top down view. So I'm going to hand on top of the thigh, hand back behind the leg, and flex my heel a little bit and just kind of rotate that hip out to the sides. This is all good stuff. I hope you all enjoy this. I'm looking to see if anybody else has come on. Yay, thanks for joining us. Let me know who you are or where you're from or what your status is or all. <laughs> or just a thumbs up. Thumbs up works too. All right, so we're going to heel towards the center, toes out, drop it on top of that leg, and again, bounce it away. Now, while I'm bouncing, I'm going to take my block over to the other side. I may need it on this side. So, again, this is my really tightly held side. So, if you have that sciatica, you know, that's usually because you got muscles that are constricting that nerve. And the nerves get cranky, and then they refer pain down the hip, down the leg, down into the foot, numb toes, tingling, maybe low back, buttock. So, we're, again, trying to warm up and or stretch out that muscle, so that's good stuff. So this is again to prepare for that, yeah? Alright, so we're going to do crossover pigeon. Now if you like regular pigeon, crossover did not appeal to you, you're more than welcome to take that right leg in towards your chest. If not, we're going to bring the left foot towards the right side. And again, push the left leg away, you're going to feel that big old elongation contraction energy happening here with the left hip. 
If you want more, it's always if, okay, if. You would take your yoga block or finger and press the leg away a little bit. I'm going to use the block. I'm not going to press too much though. Other arm out, turn the head the opposite direction or heart center or towards the crossover pigeon side. So you kind of get to choose here. So we're, we're kind of um, mixing up the yoga poses for a healthy back class, doing a little bit of variety. So, um, you know, if you play Friday's class or um, the one I recorded for you on my YouTube, um, because last Tuesday's class kind of messed up a bit. So, uh, you know, we're going to do a little variety of the poses, although it's going to be the same poses, but it's a little variety on how you execute them. All right. Whew. We're going to bring the head back to heart center, contract the belly button towards the spine, bring the leg back to center. And you know what? Go ahead and do the notice pose again. Extend those legs out towards the corners of the yoga mat and just kind of notice. Whoa. <laughs> wow. I hope it feels good for you like it does for me. It's like, this is awesome stuff. We're going to do one more honor back pose. It's, um, it's a Pilates move that I just really adore. It's to strengthen the multipetous muscle, which often is very weak, and it has fat that grows around it if you don't activate that muscle. And when that happens, then other muscles are recruited. And therefore, when other muscles are recruited, they're not being used the way that they intended to. You can have back pain because of a weak multipetous. Look that up. Then one knee, then the other. So this may be challenging, folks. We're just going to have to see. Now I'm pressing my low back into the yoga mat, contracting my belly button. I'm trying to do 90 degree legs. May not happen though, okay? And then the other one. So this may be a challenge right here. You've got to really press that low back into the yoga mat. So from here, breathe in. Exhale, drop a leg towards the floor. Bring it back on up. Exhale, drop the other leg. So you kind of feel those back muscles working here, huh? Exhale. Now normally, in my normal routine for my low back here, I do 10 of these each side. We're not going to do that today, but I just want to give you a little taste of what additionally I do for easing my back pain. Let's do one more. And then drop the legs, extend the legs. Yay, we're through with that, right? <laughs> All right, so I do 10 sets of those for me, for my, my back here. Bend one knee, then the other. I'm going to show you another one that I do, just for strengthening the musculature in the hip. So it's clamshells. It's another Pilates move. So what I'm going to do is have knees together, ankles together, but I'm going to have it to where my ankles are kind of in line with my behind and kind of make sure I'm like stacked hips. I'm going to come on down. So I usually have a little resistance band. Now usually what happens is my top hip goes more towards the back of the room. So that means my hips are not even. So I'm trying to have hips even. So from here, basically with the, the insides of the feet together, I just lift that leg up and down. Now as you progress with clamshells, what you can do is have a little resistance band in between, you know, surrounding the legs to give a little weight to the thing. And then you can also grab a one or two pound weight Place it on top of the thigh for extra um, challenge once you get used to doing this. Again, this is for strengthening the musculature in that hip. So often we have turned off behind muscles, okay? That's another reason why one might have back pain. You can have back pain because of, you know, things going on with the bones and the spine also. And release. You know what? Since we did that side, we got to do the other, okay? So I basically just kind of flip over. So make sure my ankles are in alignment with my behind. Yep, that looks pretty good. And I make sure my hips are stacked. They're not rolling back. They're not rolling forward. Again, this is a good Pilates move. I just kind of call it all together yoga stuff to help me with my stuff. And again, I already noticed I have my hip going to the back of the room. So I really have those feet, knees, hips stacked. You can have hand on the hip to make sure and open up. Again, your spicy side may be, may be telling you, woo, okay, I notice it for sure on here, yeah? Okay, let's do three more. Three, two, and one. Beautiful. All right, so since we're here, let's just roll over on to our stomach to do our backbends. Yay, backbends. We'll do a backbend, then we'll go into flowy cat-cow, 
and then we'll go to standing and do a couple of more on our back uh, yoga poses and then do our uh, meditation guided rest gratitude practice okay y'all ready all right so again those are the tenets of veterans yoga protocol um, to those tools to help you lessen your chronic stress that you're bombarded with daily all right here we go so this back bend is called locus it's a variation of locus so we're going to take one hand on top of your behind and the other and you can either interlace or clasp hands. I'm going to do clasp hands today. And I'm lifting my arms up, really squeezing the shoulders towards one another. Lift the toes and then lift the chest. And lift out the floor and breathe in and out. So again, this is stimulating the muscles in the back, which when you do that, stimulates the bones in the spine. It's all good stuff, yes? Or all bad stuff, <laughs> depending on your point of view, right? So we're laying on the stomach so our ribs expand out to the side of the body as we breathe in. It's that intercostal breathing, which means we get into all the nooks and crannies into the lungs. Let's do a couple more breaths here. And release. Hands underneath the shoulders. You're going to curl the toes, contract the belly button towards the spine. Don't even think about it, but just bring yourself up. Very good. And come to the center of the yoga mat. Let's do flowy cat cow. So normal cat cows, hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips. But this one helps you, um, if, especially if you have acute back pain around where the lumbar and the thoracic kind of meet, or the cervical and the thoracic meet, those little, you know, in between points, it kind of helps with that. All right, so we're going to have hands out, way out in front of us. And so from here, I'm going to shift a little forward. Now, again, you can be on curly toes or tops of the feet. I like curly toes because I got a funky toe and it kind of hurts. So we're going to contract the belly button towards the spine. Lay on your forearms, hands like little starfish, and behind close towards your heels. Mine's not close, but it'll get there eventually. Maybe not today, though. And let's inhale. Drag yourself forward. And as you inhale, your forearms are coming off the yoga mat, and then you start to curve to the top of the room. As you exhale, contract that belly button towards the spine, lower the hips. And again, inhale, drag yourself forward. Exhale. So the sequence of yoga poses are a part of a healthy back class that I learned how to do when I took the Yoga Vista um, Gentle Yoga for Low Back Care. Because, of course, you know, I was having lots of back pain. You know, I, I was able to figure out a whole bunch of stuff. But by taking this training, I was able to figure out stuff to do with low back, kyphosis, lordosis, scoliosis, um, all sorts of different issues with the tissues that deal with back stuff. Back stuff. All right, so we're going to come up off the floor. Again, you are kind of leery coming off the floor. You can grab your chair, push your forearms on your chair, hand back behind the knee, drag that leg up, contract the belly button towards the spine, lean forward, lift up, take your time. Once you're here close to the chair, put your hands in that little hip dip there and hinge all the way up. Woo! Sometimes when you come up off the floor, you can be dizzy. I'm going to move that chair out of the way. So I like to have people uh, bring their hands to heart center. Stand here in mountain just for a moment. Breathe in. Breathe out. Again, inhaling and exhaling. Do a little check here. So we did this at the beginning class. Feet parallel, eyes gazing at the floor or closed. Notice if you feel more even, one side versus the other. Or if it's still, you know, a little swaying going on, and that's okay too, all right? One more time. All right, let's step our feet wide. So just kind of like what we did before. We had our elbows in the back of the, on the ground, and we had the fingers into the palm of the hand. We're going to do that in our warrior two pose and activate not only the lower body, but the upper body. So we're going to, uh, oh, my hair's going crazy today. We're going to turn a set of toes towards the candle. So I'm going to lift that heel and turn that foot and bend that knee, kind of heel toe my foot out. So I like to always check to see, can I see a toe peeking out from that bent knee? Yeah. Are my hips pretty good parallel to the long end of the yoga mat? Pretty good. <laughs> 
So again, we're going to do uh, maybe bend the knee a little bit more, maybe turn that foot in, whatever makes you feel firm on the ground, wherever you are, all right? Fingers into the palms, thumbs up. So this, and contracting that belly button towards the spine. Let's bring the, draw circles with those shoulders. And again, do a little bit slower if you're feeling some little things going on. Again, this should challenge your balance. And you're also pulling the legs opposite directions, firm feet into the floor, dynamic tension. So sometimes what I do, instead of playing uh, these on Facebook, I'll download the videos from the video library, so I'll have them on my hard drive. So I can play these videos to where, you know, I don't have to have the internet up. So that's beneficial too. So if you need instructions on how to do that, send me a message and I'll, just, and I'll give you the instructions on how to save your videos on the hard drive. Woo! Let's do five more. Five, four, three, two, and one. Yay! Hands to heart center. Inhale, circle, sweep arms up. Place a hand down on that hip. Reach. And then exhale. Lean over. Inhale, back on up. Exhale, lean over. Inhale, back on up. Press firmly into the floor. Exhale, lean over. Inhale, hands back to heart center. Straighten that leg, pivot that foot, walk it in. And you're thinking, okay, we didn't do the opposite direction with the arms. We'll do that on the next warrior two, okay? Step those feet out. Again, not only lower back, but upper back. Lift the other heel, heel turn the feet towards the feet, the foot towards the plant. Bend that knee. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a tad goofy. Sorry about that, folks. And again, can you see your toes peeking out from your knee or your hips parallel? Get your feet nice and firm on that yoga mat. Again, fingers into the palms, but this time thumbs down. Oh my. <laughs> and then you got to reverse your circle. Again, dynamic tension with the feet. You're pulling the feet opposite ends of the room. And make sure that when you turn your head side to side that the circle is coming forward of your shoulders. So you get nice range of motion. I've got some little snap crackle, some little crepitus happening here. Not all my fingers go down into the palms, so just know that. So let's do five more. Here we go. Five, four, three, whoo, two, and one. Hands to heart center. Yay. Hand on that straight leg side. Inhale, circle, sweep the other arm up. Breathe in. Exhale, lean over. Inhale up. Exhale, lean over. A little balance challenge there. Inhale up. Exhale, lean over. Bring it back on up and down. All right, pivot that foot. Walk it in. Heel toe in. All right, so I was kind of wiggly last time. I'm going to use my chair to help me with tree pose just because I need a little extra help today. I just already know that, okay? So you don't have to do this. You don't have to use a chair. You can also use a wall if you have access to a wall. So the way I teach it is you step a foot out, turn your foot. So you got one knee one direction, one knee the other direction. Lift that heel, bring it in. Now I got my fingertip on the chair. Now think about being tall though. Tall and lengthy. You can be here in rooted tree. You can shift it into the calf. You can place it into that inner thigh, but make sure the knee is out to the side. Then start drifting to the front of the room. And again, you may be noticing the dance of the foot happening here. Definitely a dance of the foot. Really press that foot into that inner thigh. That's good for cellulite, by the way. You're like, mm, ah, ah, right? Oops. <laughs> Get the talk in there. I come out of the pose. That's going to be normal for me. Again, lengthening top posture. Beautiful, beautiful. And release. Let's do the other side. I'm just going to switch that chair over to the other side. Um, again, you don't have to do this with the chair. One side may be a little bit more balanced than the other. Turn that foot out. Walk it in. Lengthen. Arms may be going up, maybe in cactus, maybe heart center. Again, you get to pick where you need to be today. Breathing in, breathing in. And you may be doing the little kickstand like I am. That's okay. Keep breathing. Don't forget the breath. 
Beautiful. All right. Beautiful stuff. All right. We're going to come down to the floor again. If you need to use a chair to help yourself, come down to the floor. Bend those knees. Contract those belly button towards the spine. Bring one leg out, then the other. Let's go back onto our back once again. We're going to do yoga band-aid or yoga um, butterfly. Recline butterfly. And then we'll do our guided rest and relaxation. So if you have a blanket close by and you want to get that ready for being underneath the knees, you can roll up that blanket to where it's going to be underneath the knees. That's nice for when you're laying flat on your back. So have that handy if you would like that. Also, you can get your little hand towel and place it across your eyes when we finish with yoga band-aid. All right, so here we are. Here we are. Um, so yoga band-aid, soles of the feet together, knees out, arms out to the side. And you can tilt your pelvis towards your ribs if you're feeling some kind of woo, pain in the back. So that's going to have your pelvic bone or your, pu your pelvis, you know, firm into the yoga mat. So that's good stuff. So from here, again, it's all about the breath. So breathe in, belly soft. Exhale, contract your belly button towards the spine. Lift up to about halfway as you exhale. Inhaling, stay here. Exhale, legs together, bottoms of the feet on the yoga mat. Inhale, open up, belly soft. Exhale, tilt your pelvis, come up about one third as you exhale. And again, inhale, stay here. Exhale to about two thirds. So this is a great one for easing your back to be able to sleep at night on your back. Do this yoga pose to help facilitate that. And again, inhale, stay here. Exhale, legs together, bottoms of the feet on the yoga mat. Inhale, open up. Woo, exhale, tilt the pelvis, come up barely off the ground. Now you may be noticing some shaking. Woo, inhale, stay here. Exhale, come up to a half. Mine's more or less at half. Inhale, stay here. Exhale to about three-fourths. Got to remember my fractions here. Inhaling, stay here. Exhale, legs together. Ooh. All right, we're going to go into notice pose. Have your blanket close by if you need it. And notice, how does this feel now that we've done all this? very calculated set of yoga poses. Should it feel like pretty yummy? Should it feel opening up? Should it feel um, a little bit of back relief from the beginning of class? Hopefully not worse. We don't shoot for worse, okay? Though, if, you know, if you have MS or Parkinson's, you may feel worn out. So this is a good practice for those, those folks too, those that have neurological challenges. So again, it's all about the breath, connecting your breath with your movement. So again, if you want, um, you can stay here for your guided rest. You can have that blanket underneath the bend in the knees. That's kind of hard to do. <laughs> and that just, ooh, kind of opens up too. And just let those legs kind of splay out a bit. Now, if this is not comfortable for you, you can alternatively have, this is different then, knees together, feet apart. That way you don't have to actively have knees bent. But again, it's kind of a variation of constructive rest pose. You can also place the back of the calves on the seat of the chair. That kind of helps facilitate that too. So you all stay here. You can take your blank, your little towel, cover your eyes. Just kind of breathe in and out. And I'm going to come to the front of the room and uh, do our guided uh, rest and relaxation. Okay. So breathing in, breathing out, inhaling, exhaling. Let your body soften. Let it melt into the yoga mat. Allow yourselves to be held up by the um, by the earth. I'm gonna see if I can get this little light working here. Mm. Breathing in, breathing out. Inhaling, exhaling. Beautiful. All right. So, as you're lying here on the yoga mat, we're gonna get a little bit more comfortable. So just notice if you're holding tension somewhere, maybe in the hip, maybe in the back of the knee, maybe in the shoulder. So just kind of wiggle that body part, 
and let it soften and melt into the ground. And you probably need to do the same with the other side, kind of wiggle that body part and let it melt. All right. All right, so we're going to begin to notice our body lying here on our yoga mat. Notice your legs. Notice the parts of the body connected to the earth the calves, the thighs, the buttocks, the low back, maybe a little bit of the upper back, the back of the head. All right. Notice your arms, hands, and fingers. Notice your shoulders. Notice the head. So no, notice the top of the head. Let's bring awareness to the face. If you tend to grit your feet, your, your face, or your teeth, you know, just kind of relax, open that jaw a little bit. And then let the lips softly seal, let the tongue lie where it needs to, and you know, release any tension held in the jaw. Breathing in through the nose, and out through the nose. So let's start to bring attention to the breath. Just notice that you're breathing. And then we'll start to manipulate the breath a little by allowing the inhale to get a little bit longer. Breathing in, breathing out. Again, inhaling and exhaling. Allow our exhale to get a little bit longer. Just notice that you're breathing. Breathing in and breathing out. You might notice your heart breathing while we're breathing. Allowing your breath to slow down it allows your heart rate to slow down a little bit. Again, breathing in, breathing out. Let's allow your body now to feel the opposites. Allow your body to feel very heavy, as if you were like a rock sinking down into the earth. Your arms and legs are heavy. Just allow yourself to melt, melt into the earth. Now, let's move that opposite sensation. Allow your body to feel very light, as though you could float up from your seat, floating up towards the sky. Light arms, light legs, light body. Breathing in, breathing out. And now let's go into witnessing our thoughts. We'll start to become aware of our thoughts. Take a moment just to observe any thoughts that might be coming into the mind. You're observing them like at the movies, so you've got this little movie screen at the back of your eyelids. Just notice the thoughts, the shapes that are coming across your mind screen. Try not to engage with them, just notice, just watch. Continuing to breathe nice and slow, watching whatever comes. And then for a moment, let's check in with our emotions. Notice if there are any emotions present for you right now. You could be actually emotionally neutral. We're going to work with... Um, Disconnection and compassion. So remember a time when you felt disconnected from someone in your life. Perhaps an argument created a sense of separation or anger or frustration. Without delving into the story that these feelings create for you, just remember a feeling of disconnection. Where do you feel this emotion in your body? Is there a feeling of constriction around your heart, around your stomach? Again, remember a feeling of disconnection. Now, let's change that feeling to one of compassion and care. Remember a time when you felt empathy for another person and their suffering. Realize that everyone is doing the best that they can under their current circumstances. So allow your heart to open to a feeling of care for another person. Imagine positive outcomes for you and that person in those stressful situations and just kind of bathe in this feeling of care and compassion. And again, notice your breathing. Now let's move into our bliss body. Take a moment to recall a very happy time in your life when your happiest memories. Recall as many details as possible. Who's around you, what's around you, the colors, the shapes, the textures. Notice the sounds the smells, maybe even a taste. Notice how you feel in this moment, this moment in time, in your favorite happy memory. And let's take a breath and exhale. Let's wiggle those toes, those fingers. We're coming back into the now, back into the present moment. 
And if you haven't already, bend one knee, then the other. I'm going to ring the singing bowl. Here we go. And if you bent one knee, then the other. I invite you to roll over onto your side belly. Let the belly be soft as you breathe in. And when you're ready, with that hand that's in front of you, press into that hand. Come up to a seated place. Breathing in, breathing out. Beautiful. Thank you so much. All right. So let's bring in an idea of gratitude, something you're thankful for today. Place one hand on your heart, then the other hand, or hands to prayer mudra, whichever appeals to you best today. Again, it could be the clothes that you wear, the food that you eat, the people in your life, the God that you worship. Maybe it's a place where you lie your head down at night, but, you know, bring in a little attitude of gratitude. So we'll end our class tonight, today. The light in me honors and respects the light in you. So let's take the peace, the strength, and the understanding, and that little attitude of gratitude, and pass it on. Namaste. Peace be with you. Thank you so much for joining me today.